<clears throat> How's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Jarek Ostrowski. I am on the UX Foundations team, and I'm going to be talking about split drop down buttons today and some recent user testing that we went through that was just enlightening and entertaining all at the same time. And the link to the uh, the main issue is in the slides as well as the, the doc, if you're interested in taking a look as we work through this. So first, uh, thanks Jeff Crow for bringing this up in a previous UI showcase. It was just reaffirmation or confirmation that this needed to be rethought. Um, the example being the split drop down where you open the drop down and you make a selection and it actually changes the value of the button. And then you click the button to do that action. So in this case, when you hit new subgroup, it actually just changes the button as we you know, are all pretty familiar with this, but those watching might not be. So um, yeah, so this was an opportunity for us in the foundations team to do some user testing and gather some research around a specific element or component because it's um, actually more rare to come across these opportunities than uh, trying to test features out in a stage group, which is really cool. So our split drop-down buttons, we have actually two different behaviors with the same visual component. So obviously right off the bat, this isn't a good thing. We wanna have consistency. When you see something and you click on something, it should be consistent throughout the entire experience and not like, here's a button, click it, something you know pops open or just doesn't meet expectations. And then another visually similar thing does something different. So. Here are some examples that we gathered just preliminarily. Uh, this was started a while back. Um, and we, a couple of them, I think are being worked on or refactored right now, which is really cool to see. So um, the Marcus draft performs the action, whereas the other ones change the default button and that's the behavior that we tested. And of course this would, co uh, would cause confusion, right? And it's a fake, just kind of a fun little thing. Uh, because one thing, two things next to each other, spot the differences. You know, like there's no difference, but then when you click on it, something different happens. So, all right, let's the testing begin. Let's do this. You know, grab, you know, grab the flamethrower, get in the monster truck. Yeah, jump in 20 cars, sweet. No, 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 okay. I jumped the gun a little bit um, and I put 10 tests out there. Yeah, everything looked good. We just like, uh, I collaborated, uh, collaborated on it with a couple people to see if it was good, sent it out, and eight of the 10 people didn't follow the direction properly. Now, a lot of you have gone through this uh, learning curve already with user testing. I haven't in particular, um, at least in a while, I, I did some user testing a while back and you know just forgot that you need to refine the test before you send it out. Okay, cool. It's fixed. You know, let's do this. More testing. Let's go. You know, jump in the monster truck again. We're going to jump some more, but it's still failing. Okay. So even after putting in the instructions, do not click in all caps. No, people still clicked. Um, so this was a problem, but we kept refining, kept refining, kept iterating. And uh, the, uh, so here's the problem um, and a visual example of what the actual prototype was. So basically people were asked in this scenario because I felt the comment and start a thread was a, as basic of an example, real world example that we can get to test. And so they were asked to click start the start a thread option in the drop down. Then once they clicked, asked if this met their expectation or not. And so when they did, the button changed to the default, like these, a lot of these split drop downs do. They change the default of the button and then nothing happened. And so there was this sort of awkward pause and people didn't see anything happening. They thought something was going to start or like, well, you know, something didn't, nothing happened. And so 
what they did was they kept clicking around until something did happen. So to me, what's interesting because this isn't direct feedback, it's inaudible. It's not something that you read from a transcript from the feedback, nothing happened, which means, and they go on and subsequently click around until something does happen, means that when nothing happened, it did not meet their expectations because they're expecting something to happen. So that was just a really interesting sort of nuance with the testing and seeing nothing happening, or at least, you know, we, they saw the button change. They saw the button default change, but it wasn't what they expected to happen when they clicked it. But then of course, when they clicked the button said, they said, okay, yes, this is what I expected when I clicked. So it was just those little nuances during the test, but we did gather enough uh, data to come to a conclusion. Um, we, I ran like three or four tests and the ones who clicked the option in the dropdown, the button changed the default, and they did talk about their expectation after that action. It did not meet their expectations. So this is this was my hypothesis all along, uh, especially since we already had that feedback from Jeff's um, UX showcase and research that this was something users were confused by that they had to you know there was more work to get to what they wanted to do, et cetera, et cetera, and. Um, so this behavior will eventually be deprecated and I'll go over the next few steps of what's gonna happen for that. And what's interesting is this is a gitlab.com specific element behavior. This is sort of a legacy, if you will, um, element. Our current GL dropdown component when using a split does not have this behavior. So this, like we didn't even need to go into the component to adjust this. This is just a specific HTML element that is legacy that's been on gitlab.com for a while. So next steps, this part is done. We went and updated the pajamas docs to remove the, the quote unquote changing default button text. So now we've updated that documentation so that that behavior is not gonna happen or shouldn't happen anymore. And there's a link there, as well as in a UX showcase doc. Next step that I'm currently working on is identify locations of all these split buttons with this behavior, and then identify uh, which of you are associated in what particular area. So if a split button is in plan, then I'll reach out to the person in plan to talk about how we can deprecate and you know I'll work with you to um, update and um, do these things. Because what was interesting about this is that we had the opportunity to test this component and, or not component, well, it's not component technically in uh, GitLab UI, but it is an element. So by identifying problems with components that might be in all these different stages, if it's a problem, then it's a problem in all of the different stages that we're all working in. So it's super important that there's consistency and continuity here. And so, in that issue, I'll be identifying where we have the rest of those instances, um, the specific stage designer, and then work on a plan to try and deprecate those. And really that's it. I just, uh, a couple, like I kind of went over two takeaways today. One was the user testing piece, which I just thought was interesting. And um, I know a lot of you have gone through this, but it was a unique case for me to go through it in the foundation side because you know, again, we don't have the opportunity to do that a lot with specific um, elements or components. And so anytime um, I can identify something in a UX showcase or if somebody posts something in the foundations channel about like, I know Becca has mentioned tabs. And so we're gonna be looking at our tabs to see if uh, there's not enough affordance because tabs live everywhere in a lot of stages. and if you know, people are confused or there's, they're not discoverable, then that's something we need to test and validate and update on the foundation side. So yeah, thank you very much. Awesome, thanks, Jarek. Does anyone have any questions or comments?
Derek was just incredibly clear. Great presentation. All right, well, maybe you, oh, I'll, I'll ask a question. This is Alexis, sorry. Um, how are you gonna stop them from clicking next time, Derek? <laughs> it's not a, well, it's, how am I gonna stop them from, I don't know if I understand the question. So um, when you were testing, I, you learned uh, that uh, they were clicking um, when you didn't yeah. intend them to. So is, did you kind of redesign the test in some way or like, how are you gonna change for next time you do a test like this? Yeah, no, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so each iteration of the test, the first one was like, oh yeah, they'll, everyone will get it. And you know, it'll be perfectly clear and everything because we collaborated on it and we reviewed it and refined it. Um, but really the real refining happens after you send the test down. So after the first iteration was like, at a sentence, do not click again once you clicked the drop down option. But, you know, and that sort of reduced the percentage of people who clicked, but people still clicked. And then um, was like, you know, refine the prototype because there was something about how they kept clicking but nothing happened um in particular when they clicked start a th the start a thread button nothing really happened the prototype was just changing the button and nothing else afterwards and so there was changing that so that opened a, a new dynamic um, of understanding people and the test and yeah i just kept um trying to iterate like do not you know once once open once the drop down is open taught you know verbalize how um if that met your expectations and you just sort of like keep running into the wall running into the brick wall until you get enough data and research to say like okay these people who did talk about their expectation and follow the instructions to a t then there's enough data to because i i feel like it's never going to be perfect and you know, even if that, you have to refine it and you get, you, as long as you gather enough data to give you a consensus um, conclusion, I think that's good. It doesn't have to be perfect, I don't think. That makes sense. I like how you called out just sending out maybe one test to real participants to, to see what they think, because they always do something a little different than you expect. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. In my head, it's it all makes sense. And to the other person that I send it to, like, you know, in GitLab, it's like, yep, it makes sense. Sweet, this is going to be awesome. No, <laughs> that's not exactly how it goes all the time. Was your prototype, um, well, I'm assuming it was clickable from the start, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the original was to just change the value of the button to show this behavior and ask about the expectations, but they can a lot of people consider that nothing happening. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of interesting. My, I mean, I don't want to get into ideation too much, but uh, maybe, maybe somehow not having a clickable prototype at first, right? And then you like have to click a next button to move on or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, yeah, we can play I, around I, later. <laughs> yeah, oh, listen, I'm open to any and all ideas when it comes to this stuff. So <laughs> anything to make it better. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Hey, Jared, could you uh, list or link the videos, or excuse me, some of the videos? I'd like to, I'm kind of curious on how the users are failing the tests. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll add the... Um, I created a dovetail project, so I'll link the dovetail project. It's all the transcriptions and uh, tagged a bunch of the feedback and organized it a little bit, so I'll add that. Awesome, great. If there are no other questions or comments, then uh, thanks so much, Derek, for sharing. Thank you.